Hi, it's Ivan from Andis. Welcome to another edition of Andis Tool Tips on the Web. Today, we're in southern Wisconsin with our friends from Cost Cutters at Janesville and Beloit, Wisconsin. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Say hello to everybody. Today, we're going to cut a fade. We're going to show you an easy way to use our side fading technique. Ignacio has agreed to donate some hair for your educational benefit, and we're going to show you how to fade without putting the line in, because if you don't put the line in, you don't got to take the line out. Thanks for watching. Remember to check us out at andis.com. And thanks for being here. Here we go. Step number one for cutting a fade is cutting the top. We're going to take the top down. I've got a number four guard on my clipper. And as I suspected, this is going to take just a little bit of hair down off the top of his head. And we're going to be sure that as we work with our number four, we work against the natural growth direction and we work in overlapping sections. Guard your guard. I've got my cameraman. Zoom in here real good. I've got, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Don't be shy. I've got my guard on my clipper and I've got my fingers on my guard. I'm overlapping my sections and I'm going to do what's called guard your guard. Halfway through this guy's haircut, if that guard were to fall off that clipper, that's your fault. You are responsible for what happens at the cutting end of the tool at all times. Guard your guard, overlap your sections, and be sure when we are fading that we cut far enough down the head that we overlap into with our top length into the top edge of what will become our faded off perimeter or sides. We're going to cut the whole top. That'll be the end of step number one, ready to move on to step number two. Step number one was to cut the top. Step number two is to pick our fade point. It's just our decision step. We're going to decide, do we want to fade him low, do we want to fade him natural, or do we want to fade him high? The widest point of the head, the parietal ridge, the crest line, or the occipital area, that kind of a fade would be considered a natural fade. Anything lower than natural is low. Anything higher than natural would be high. For the purposes of this demo, we're going to fade him right about natural to high, just over the top of the natural point. And we're going to use our clipper with our adjustable blade open in the number one position. We don't want to skin him down real tight, but we want to take him short enough to create a nice natural fade. Step number one was cut the top. Step number two was pick our fade point. Step number three is to strike our fade line. We're going to hold our clipper sideways. We're going to apply the pressure. Not a lot of pressure, but gentle pressure. Zoom in real close here, cameraman. On our last fade video, people complained about the fact that we weren't zoomed in enough. We're going to fix that now. Here we go. I'm going to apply the corner of the blade against the head, and I'm going to work sideways. I'm not working up from below, creating a hard line. I'm going to work sideways. Notice when I work sideways like that, I've got a big old gap back here. My finger fits into that gap. But you'll notice, because heads are curved, heads are curved, as we work sideways like that, within that fade area, I create a very natural fade. If I have to turn the tool around to adjust for natural growth direction, I can. I've got very little lip or ridge here that I will later need to blend down. Notice I work my way around the head, working my way around the head with the blade in the open position. Where growth direction dictates, I'll change direction and I'll work the other way. But notice how within that fade zone, I'm getting a really nice little fade in through there. I've got a little bit of blending to do up here, but that's step four and we're not there yet. We're going to finish out our sideline working all the way around the head. And notice when we got to here, the hair grows forward. So when we were moving forward, it just tended to push the hair down. So what do we do? We turn the clipper over, we change directions, and I was even able to change hands. Some folks may use the same hand if they're not ambidextrous, but I changed directions. I also changed hands. Step number one, we cut the top. Step number two, we picked our fade point. Step number three, I struck my fade line with my Envy Clipper sideways around the head, and we're ready for step number four. Step number one was cut the top. Step number two was pick our fade point. Step number three, we struck our fade line. Step number four is blending. We're going to blend from the top edge of our faded zone into the interior of his haircut. Notice clipper over comb. I'm using underhand positioning because I'm working over 
the crest line. I'm holding my comb at an angle. He wants more of a verticalness or a squareness to his haircut. We have no problem delivering that. We're gonna rotate our comb. Notice I come in with my clipper comb and I roll my comb, that rolling action. I'm rolling until and this is important. The top of the tips of the teeth are tipped out towards me. If the top of the tips of the teeth are tipped in towards him, I'm going to cut a hole in his head. I'm going to have to blend that hole out. But notice, I use my clipper over comb action just at the top of that fade zone to blend into the longer hair. Step number one, I cut the top. Step number two, I picked my fade point. Step number three, I struck my fade line sideways around the head. By striking my fade line with my blade at an angle, the interior layering, the blending up into that top, is at a length that is long enough that I can easily get my clipper comb in and blend it off. It eliminates all that struggling to fade in a line. If I need to, I could address some of that transition with a guard. I cut the top with a four, so this is a three. I can use this if need be to address some overhang. If the three doesn't catch it, I could certainly go one guard shorter with my two and use my rocking action. Don't get in on the tips of the teeth. Stay out further on the blade to blend off any last of the transitional demarcation that exists between the fade zone and the top. Step number one, we cut the top. Step number two, we picked our fade point. Step number three, we struck our fade line. And step number four, we did our blending, whether we did it with a clipper comb or a clipper snap-on comb to blend our transition. We're ready for step number five. Here we go, it's time for step number five. Step number one, we cut the top. Step number two, we picked our fade point. Step number three, we struck our fade line. Step number four, we blended up. And step number five, we gut out the bottom. We're gonna remove everything below the fade line with whatever blade we used to strike our fade line. So in other words, if he wanted a zero down here with the blade closed, I would have struck my fade line with the blade closed. Since he wanted this a number one with an open blade, I struck my fade line sideways with an open blade. Now all I do is I come in, zoom in close camera person. All we do is we come in with the blade open representing the same length we had. And look how there's no line there because we blended up and into it. We never created a line. We never have to take a line out if we never put a line in. So now we go all the way around the head, gutting out the extra hair from beneath the fade line, getting a clean, beautiful faded transition. No step, no ledge, no ridge, no line, no mark, no jump, no bump. <coughs> Because we cut the top first, we struck our fade line sideways because heads are curved, blades are straight, and we came around the curve of the head like that. That was step four, We three, that was four was blending, five was to gut out the bottom. We need to proceed all the way around the bottom to finish gutting this all out. He will be done, he will be thrilled, and you now have a powerful technique for cutting a fade sideways. We're at Cost cutters of Janesville and Beloit in South Central Wisconsin. They invited us in to spend some time sharing a little bit of clipper cutting with them, helping them do what they do for customers, and helping us help them do what they do. We're thrilled to be here. We thank you for watching. Don't forget, check us out at andis.com. Follow us on Facebook and keep tabs with us on Twitter. Have a great day.